Hello, Haylet Nation, and welcome to all my RV Nerd Herd regular followers. We've got a brand new model for you today. It comes in a little bit under 6,100 pounds, and it fits very nicely within the realm of half-ton tow capability, a Wildwood X-Lite 28 VBXL, which either stands for Vittles, Bittles, and Extra Littles, or it stands for a Versa Bunk X-Lite model. And I'm pretty sure it's the second one and not the first one. Let's take a look with our floor plan in a flash. This is a cool model. Really, on the surface, it really just kind of fills in the slot of a normal quad bunk private rear bedroom. But if you're noticing, the X-Lite series has gone through a significant update. X-Lite models with a super slide like this now have the same full Versa lounge that you get in a full Wildwood. That was not the case last year. And if you're really looking close, did you notice that the X-Lite slide system is now completely carpetless, which is a quality found almost nowhere else in a conventional RV class. So suddenly we are, we're half ton towable, we're more family friendly than we've ever been before. We have convertible seating, convertible sleeping. On a rainy day, if you're stuck inside the camper, you've got all kinds of room in this thing. Or if you just need to sleep everybody and their brother and their friends and their cousins, you could do all that here too. So if you see something you like, leave us a comment and let us know how we're doing. And if you see something you wish you could see different, remember the manufacturers do watch your channel pretty close and you'd be surprised how much your feedback does get seen by them. So let us know both ways. Now, when I began this video, I nearly described this camper as a baby 29 V-Bud. The 29 V-Bud is the full Wildwood, whereas this is the X-Lite. And you could easily describe that as big brother versus little brother. And I don't think that that's necessarily inaccurate, but I think it shortchanges this camper. It, it doesn't feel like, like, like there's, you don't have to settle for this one. There's nothing that you're settling for here. As compared to last year, you are now getting the full Wildwood Versa Lounge here at an X-Lite. That was not previously the case. And after this video concludes, before the credits roll, I will actually give you a full like six and a half minute tour of everything that this seating arrangement does because the thing is it only does everything you can see that you can convert it into huge seating space here you can convert it into an extra large or smaller dinette there are five giant storage totes below it totaling 20.3 cubic foot of storage just here within the slide out and all that's true in big brother full wildwood but this one actually has an advantage in one respect because the way that they're doing the slide out system here in the wildwood x light it is a step up slide, but it is carpetless. And Big Brother Wildwood is not carpetless. Almost nothing else in this class is carpetless. That is a laminated RV feature that frankly is not even found across the board in laminated RVs. So they have really done something special here that I think really is, like for a family like mine, a family on the go, you're gonna love it. Now that's not sunlight shining above the slide out. That is actually, instead of a uh, you know blue disco light, they're actually doing a white accent light above the slide right here. And it always trips me out. People go, oh, they're doing it in the cabinets too. Because the reflection of the light over here makes it look like there's a light inside the cabinet off that glass front door. It's not, but it sure does look like it. Now you've got blackout shades all the way around and the slide side breeze windows, those guys right there, they do open for airflow. Now, if you want to blot the sun out, because these are non-tinted windows, you can, just like we're doing right here. And you will see that actually the way the Wildwood's done their windows when it is hot summer day like today, and you want to blot the sun out, it will do a fantastic job of it because they also have like a sun blocker on the back of that window. But more to that when we get there. Central air uh, all the way through all your X-Lite Wildwoods like these with the super slides. X-Lite Wildwood does not do floor vented heating. They'll actually do cabinet heat ducts, which means this is now a completely carpetless, ventless camper that it was not before. And that's kind of what I'm saying. Wildwood is really, in a sense, not made it so that there's a fancy Wildwood and then the less fancy Wildwood. They've made it so that there are two purpose-built uh, different Wildwoods that each kind of appeal to a slightly different buyer, but they both share a ton of the same DNA. For instance, uh, you've got that larger 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge over there. You've got, uh, you know, the same Versa Lounge seating. You have the same sealed edge countertops throughout both Wildwood and X-Lite. And they do that not just in the kitchen, they do it in the dining, and they do it in the bathroom as well. Now, the idea behind this camper, I think, is flexible living space, lots of sleeping, and half-ton towability. 
And it's not that the bathroom is not good. It's just that uh, the bathroom's normal. Now, by the way, that skylight above the shower, that is actually something that is optional that we add for you here at Halo RV. And I'll show you why. I'm uh, 6'3", and you do have to step up into the shower space a little bit, and you see that my head does have to be up in that bubble to shower. Well, without that, I would, my head, I'd be doing like a, a neck wrecker crank the whole time if I wanted to get up in here. So that skylight lets me stand in the shower, not to mention it gives you some extra lighting in here. Now, Wildwood, like a lot of brands, has gone away from uh, tubs in their bathrooms. And uh, some people feel like, man, this is, you know, it's a, it's a bunkhouse. Doesn't a tub make sense? I don't know. You don't tend to spend a lot of time uh, in RV bathrooms. You, you tend to kind of get in, do a quick bath, quick shower, and get out. You also uh, don't tend to use as much, like you try not to use a lot of water because you have limited holding tank capacity. Even when you're in a park, you don't have to go out every five minutes and empty your gray tank or whatever, you know. Um, notice too, again, the sealed counters all the way through here. And if you're noticing that uh, shower curtain, it has like a radius track at the top for some extra elbow room, which is really, really nice. And it does track at the bottom too. So the curtain won't get stuck to you. You know, like the, like, a, <laughs> like you ever have, what do I want to say here? Like a plastic bag underwater. There's no way to get it off your hand. It, it's like, it's like sucked to you until death do us part. Now the, the leg room in here, is sufficient for a big person like me but once again i'm not coming in here so i can sit on the toilet and you know spend a lot of time i'm coming in here so i can do my business and then leave and so i think sufficient legroom in a family camper like this for weekend runarounds i think that's perfectly fine i don't see that as a knock against this model whatsoever and all that's well and good and the versa lounge is great and the carpetless is nice but I think it's this rear room that's going to make this one for you. Because what they did here, I, I think is, uh, it is a really good example of how Wildwood is pushing the envelope. And they are driving the industry and the creativity and floor plans forward. So, I mean, really, this is very similar to the old uh, private rear bunks. And they still make things like the 273 Wildwood uh, that you'll find here at Halo RV, which is like a fixed L bunk. It's almost, it's very same but different to this. But what you're getting here is let's say it's a rainy day. You know what some people really like are those two slide bunk models because you gain extra space in the back when you need it. Well, <laughs> guess what, Carol Baskin? We got ourselves plenty of room back here. So what we've got is the Wildwood Versa Bunk. So this thing opens up into like basically a queen bed, but during the day, what you enjoy is basically just a whole second living room. You've got household outlets with USB plugs right there. Um, all the windows have shades. You can uh, close them off. You see how the overhead beds flip up with struts? How uh, the bed supports are actually uh, lagged right into the walls basically, so that you have good support on those. And don't get, it's not a giant bunk. You're not going to fit a 400 pound person up there anyway. Like a, what is it? Two, 250 pound rating, whatever it is on those. More than sufficient for this size of bed. If you want, there's a little mini entertainment center over here. Nice little shoe garage for the kiddos. The, uh, um, you know, extra little storage pockets they could. And I, I tell you what impressed me is the attention to detail they had by like fully finishing this off with that nice sealed edge counter. If that would have just been a wooden top of a cabinet, and they said, well, the bunk flips down and it covers it most of the time, so we're not going to do it nice. I wouldn't have really been surprised, but they did it nice. And you can see how anywhere you're going to sit or sleep, you get some extra plugs for, you know, any kind of entertainment. But the thing is, it is more than just like a second living room. So when you need to sleep all of the people... You can fold everything down. You've got the uh, dual single overhead bunks right here. They're about 74 inches long, by the way. That's a normal bunk length in the RV industry, if anything is normal. And then down below, the Versa bunk thing kind of opens up into almost like a Versa queen because everything is versatile in the Wildwood and X-Lite series. And what's kind of cool about this, and that measures about 60 by 74. It's like a camp queen size like you'd have in a lot of bedrooms. So you can look at this as a true two bedroom camper which is a very rare find in the rv industry or you can look at it as a bunkhouse or a den or something more it really gives you a lot of the benefits of like a 32 bhcs big giant two slide wildwood but with only one slide and i noticed that my light just kicked out i think somebody must have thought i left my battery box in the front of this because my videos run long sometimes my own staff even thinks that i must have left my hardware out here so i gotta go get power run back to this thing give me just a moment Leave us a quick comment. Let us know how you like that thing because I I think that's awesome. 
I mark my words, within about a year, year and a half, you're going to watch other manufacturers copy this floor plan because that whole convertible setup, it's so cool. It only does everything. Because the other thing is the, the, the sofa cushion bed thing, it's not bolted to the floor. If you just want to get that out of there, if you need room for a pack and play, or uh, if you want to turn, oh man, so many people are work camping right now, remote working. Take that mattress out of there. That's an office. That's an office all day long. This is the, This is probably one of the best floor plans. It just occurred to me. The best floor plans you could ever imagine for turning a camper into an office type camper. You could use the living room here like a couple's model. No sweat. It's a great living room. You could turn that into a work camping office or a craft room or a den or something like that. Ooh, that's so good. That is so good. Am I, is it just me? That is good. <laughs> And by the way, every window, all three windows in that bunk room, they all open for airflow. And that is one of those things that once again, in what you would call a budget sensitive, smarter class camper, you just don't always find. Now, uh, another quick mention, just because I think it is such a strong feature, the new carpetless slide in the x light here. Again, not even Big Brother Wildwood does that. And you might ask why? Short answer, different slide system, and one can do it easily and one couldn't, and I think they're probably working on it, but right now this is what it is. But this is one of those floor plans that if you choose to add a TV, I think this is one of those floor plans where the Versa Lounge benefits so, so greatly because it gives you a nice corner seating area where you're looking straight on at the entertainment. You don't have to do a 90 degree neck wrecker. But if you're like me, I go camping to get away from a lot of that. I go camping to really connect with my family. I want to spend time in a lawn chair. I want to spend time in the dirt playing with my kid. Uh, you know, everybody camps differently, but this is set up where it can work for you. If you want a TV, it can work for me when I don't care. And both of us, I think, will enjoy the standard electric space heating fireplace that we have down here. Even if you don't care about using it for um, heating purposes, uh, like, I don't tend to camp when it's super cold, although sometimes the free heat would be nice when I'm already paying for the campground's electricity. Why burn my propane? But the LED lighting element is great, and that little clutter cut and shoe garage by the door, Uncle Josh Yarviner, that is something I am always sweet on. Now, they're using uh, a pretty standard uh, Bluetooth uh, AM FM stereo with the HDMI plugs, but you see that, you know, you got your uh, all kinds of shelf space there, all your different outlets, and they actually give you a nice little feed spot here if you want to run an H... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need to... <laughs> we'll put that in the highlight reel. <laughs> if you want to run your HDMI cables up to the TV, <laughs> you can do that. Oh, okay. Let's start looking at storage. Now, the thing is, at the end of the video, remember, I will show you all the tote storage here through the Wildwood Versa Lounge. Um, I don't want to like bury six extra minutes of content in every single video I do, but I do actually want to start past the Versa Lounge back here in what you almost call like the hallway. Because, you know, the storage in the bathroom itself was a little bit limited. So being able to keep some things like some towels here, and remember this is just outside the bunk room. So if you want this to be extra kid clothes space or a combination thereof, you could do that. And again, I'll say it a hundred times, you'll see all the storage under this dinette system at the end of the video if you feel like stay in tune. But I just want to give you an idea of all the handy tote storage down there. And they're all food safe, by the way. Little bit of space around the entertainment center. They used the pockets that they could. Now, even though we're uh, in a X light, not a full extra tall Wildwood, I love that they still put a shelf in that overhead kitchen cabinetry right there because it really maximizes our capacity. That is a full breeze through window there in the kitchen. You've got some household outlets kind of next to where that fire extinguisher is. Uh, and then down here, one of the things I like, they're giving us from the factory a nice wastebasket space. A lot of campers don't do that. If I'm gonna, be, I always try to be fair. This camper is limited on drawer space. That is the only normal proper kitchen drawer. And you're going, why didn't they use this down here? There's a big camp kitchen outside when we get there. So don't forget that. It is just kind of like, it's the push and the pull. But at the end of the day, one drawer for silverware and stuff is probably enough. I have enough room in here. I could put a utensil organizer. I could have a long grill lighter. I could have, not that you need it on this one, unless you want to bring an extra gill, I suppose. Uh, I could have space in here for a deck of cards. Kind of like the bathroom, it's sufficient for this type of camper. This is not a fifth wheel. 
uh, really with the idea of full-time living, full-time expectation. So it, it's appropriate in the way that they really bulked up on the dry cabinet storage space, I think. I wouldn't be offended by an extra drawer. And again, it, it, pointing out things that aren't necessarily perfect like that, if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button and follow along. And remember that we will always give you straight facts here at Halet RV. Our goal is to help you find your second camper the first time around. That's why we're doing this whole thing. Now, one of the nice things about the way they have this set up too is they have a full privacy wall door for the bedroom. So, you know, if you need to come in here, maybe you got a migraine, maybe you need to chill, you can do that. And they're using the same blackout shades here that they use in the living room. They don't use cheaper shades once they leave the living room in a Wildwood. It is a very nice consistency and attention to detail. Also, this window over here on the door side of your RV, it does open for airflow and it's super tall. So if you're laying in bed, you can see out that window without having to get up you know, put on pants because that's annoying, right? And here's another cool thing. Again, just like Big Brother Wildwood, they still have just a light switch for the bedroom. Almost no campers in this class do stuff like that. Just like Big Brother Wildwood, you have the two hanging closets, but you also still have the uh, CPAP storage. You notice how there's a household outlet inside that cutaway closet cabinet right there? That is a place where if you wanted to, you could put, you know, your phone or CPAP machine or something down in there. Now, the bedding here, it is from the factory a camp queen, but they are intentionally building these with extra space here. So if you went to a true queen, you could still walk around it. By the way, yes, there are TV hookups right here across from the bed. That is something pretty much every camper has, but if I don't point it out, people assume it's not there. So yes, they are there. And here's another thing I like. We're gonna do this in real time, no camera magic. Easy lift bed on a plywood deck. That's a nicer feature. And Basically, in a sense, like building in dresser drawer storage. So you've got like the Versa bunk and the Versa lounge and the Versa blah, blah, blahs. I don't know what you want to call this. We're going to call it the Versa dresser or whatever, but it's awesome. And I love, like, if you got two or three or four people here, you can sectionalize these however you want. Something else I thought about, you could take one or two of those out and you can have a little cat bed there because I'm, I'm learning there's a growing number of cat campers out there. Plus... Another handy little shoe garage down here. Now, a lot of campers that are uh, ventless flooring in the living room and kitchen will sometimes have a heat vent in the bedroom floor right here. And you see that Wildwood doesn't do that. They route things a little bit differently so you don't have that uh, inconsistency here. But there is a little bit of a trick. When you're jamming 10 pounds of sugar into a five pound camper like this, eventually it's gonna catch up with you. And where you see that is when you close the slide. And I hope you folks really appreciate the fact that we're willing to show you not just where everything is all sunshine and rainbows, but sometimes even some points of concern to help you proactively make sure you're getting your second camper the first time. We wanna make sure you're very happy with your experience at Halet RV. So when the slide's closed, we can get to our kitchen stuff, that's no sweat. You can easily and safely walk on the floor uh, in the Wildwood x Light series without damaging them, and I love that. Again, update to carpet list right there. And as we slide back here, you notice you're not at all going to get into the bathroom door. But, if you're fairly skinny, or you got a little kid, you can, they can sneak back there. So it is, potentially possible to like load the kids' bags and stuff in there before you travel. You just really gotta kind of plan ahead. Now, this is the type of slide system you do not ideally want to only open partially. Could you, without damaging, without causing problems? Yes, probably be just fine. It's not recommended. It is recommended that you run the slide system all the way out or all the way in and not partially if you can help it. Now, as we step outside, it kind of felt appropriate to start by that friction hinge anti-slam door. And uh, if, you know, old glory there in the background is no indication. I love Bell Tire over there, by the way, flying that giant flag. That is such a nice thing that they do there. I really appreciate that. Uh, anyway, if that's any indication, though, that big, that's a lot of fabric whipping in the wind. It's very breezy. I'm doing my best to shield the camera from it, but it is gusty. Now, they do, uh, like a lot of campers now, like Cherokee kind of started this, and then Wildwood uh, adopted their version of it, and I like them both quite a bit. But they're a little miniature camp kitchen on here, because normally... Uh, a private rear bunkhouse like this, what you would end up doing is sacrificing a lower bunk and you'd have a little camp kitchen back there in the corner. But with the Versa bunk, you couldn't do that. 
Good news is Wildwood already had the engineering done. They included a little mini camp kitchen over here, and frankly, for as small as it is, it's very nicely equipped. It comes with not just the blue coily hose like everybody else has. Well, this one's black, obviously, but also including a handy, basically like garden hose sprayer head. Now you can set it on different ways, and I tell you, mist on a hot day is actually kind of nice to just kind of spray out a little bit and cool some stuff down. Uh, you'd be surprised how much evaporating water will cool surfaces. Secondly, the jet mode, gentlemen, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. You put it on jet mode, get that nice cold water to wake your wife up on a warm summer day when she's sitting there in the sun. Just make sure you're faster than her and you can lock that deadbolt uh, before she can get to you because she will skin you alive. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Anyway, outside TV hookup next to that. Also the mini camp kitchen. You can see they've gone away from the little uh, conventional burner things and gone to the nice uh, suburban griddle, which I know a lot of people like. But the thing is too, you can't really uh, overtly see it, but if I get down here, you can see they've even heat shielded it down here so that you're not compromising your, your thermal foil countertop that they have even here in the camp kitchen. And then the uh, oop, other side, mini fridge. Great little space to keep some drinks outside. And what's nice is that mini fridge plus the fridge inside gives us over or really close to 13 cubic foot of total cold storage space. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. Now, oh, I knew I would do this. Uh, I kind of need two hands to retract it, but I do want to give you uh, the idea that Wildwood has gone from the LCI step to the Moride step because it has that easy adjust. There you go. Uh, you just pull the leg out and it click locks into place, kind of like drawbridge style. And it makes this thing so simple to keep locked down and stable. Now, standard stable steps, and on a Wildwood, you are getting standard strong arm stabilizer jack bars. That's the yellow bar there, that banana yellow thing on those jacks. They are on the front and the rear jacks. They're actually easier to see from the back, but what it's gonna do when you drop that jack, and by the way, Wildwood manual jacks are rated for more weight than most people in this class, which means more stability. This camper is, I, I actually give it the title of best in class campsite stability. When the jacks are down, when the strong arms are tightened, factor in the more rides, there is no trailer from a factory out of the box that will wiggle and wobble less when people walk in and move around inside it as compared to a Wildwood. I believe that wholeheartedly. And keep in mind, we carry a lot of different brands here at Halid RV. For me to call something best in class like that, it has to really shine above. And I tell you what, man, it is. this is a big pass-through compartment. And you can see how nicely finished it is. Plus, they're shipping with this the little kind of hex nut adapter for a drill so that you can pretend you're NASCAR pit crew driver and have what we like to call the cordless jack system. Put your jack legs up and down way faster and with more stability even than power jacks. Little simple side mount solar prep plug here. This is, uh, uh, you know, camper as it comes out of the box from the factory, I, I just perfect for like, uh, you know, park camping. But if you want to get off grid a little bit, a simple portable solar panel on a day like today will keep that fridge running and topped off and keep your batteries uh, running no sweat. The uh, nose of this, just like Big Brother Wildwood, has a 67% uh, thicker nose skin. And one of the things that I really like about Wildwood, so many campers in this class have gone to silver skin. And don't get me wrong, that silver skin looks stellar. A lot of S's and alliteration there, but it does soak up more heat from the sun. So look at those big white out uh, sun blocking shades in the slide. Look at the white skin on this camper. They also have a white shroud on their air conditioner. This will handle hotter temperatures pretty darn nicely. Uh, now you've got magnet holdbacks on your baggage doors. And one other thing I want to mention here, uh, a full Wildwood has a standard heated and closed belly. This is an X-Lite. It actually does not. However, they do a neat thing here. They kind of do a little bit of the best of both worlds. This is a more price sensitive camper, maybe not made for the extreme climates, but you notice one thing that you don't see. You don't see like exposed plumbing. You don't see exposure. They actually still go ahead and run all their plumbing through the floor. So it's still protected plumbing. It's just not a heated enclosed belly. It's not the same thing, but it is better than nothing. They've done a good job here. So our, our slides again, the slide sides have full breeze through windows, which most things in this category in the, uh, the x light Wildwood that we're looking at corresponds more to a Catalina Summit, a J-Flight SLX, uh, like a Gray Wolf SE or something like that, or a Gray Wolf. The, the often a little bit lower trim package level versus a full J-Flight, full Catalina, full Wildwood, full uh, Cherokee, you get the idea. But they're still doing the slide size breeze windows. They're still doing the same Versa Lounge seating, the same slide awning prep. 
the same walkable roofing. They're still doing the stabilizer jack leg things. They're still, still doing a black tank flush. There is more that is consistent and in line with a full-fledged Wildwood than what you would normally uh, expect from what I like to call a smarter class family camper. Like, this is my speed right here. This is for somebody like me. I go camping now and then. I want to have a good, comfortable time when I'm doing it, but I don't want to feel like I broke the bank getting there. You know, I don't need fancy pants, over-the-top, shiny shoes, corporate McStuffy pants nonsense. I just need a solid camper that's going to get my family there, have some memories, and maybe a little bit of rainy day space. And that is this one all day long. Backup camera prep too. Uh, by the way, the spare tire that you're seeing on here, that is actually an optional piece of equipment that we add for you here at Halid RV. Not a standard object. So when you are shopping around, if there is that one cutthroat internet budget dealer that somehow has it a dollar cheaper, remember a couple things. We don't do hidden dealer fees. And we actually have this thing built the way you're gonna wanna camp in it. Not something that's gonna require you to spend a couple hundred bucks after the fact to get it ready. So thank you for spending the time with us here, guys. And remember, we are family owned and operated, and we sure would love the opportunity to earn your business. And it doesn't matter if you live near or far. We only do hitching pieces, parts, finance, RV delivery, and everything in between. We don't do hidden dealer fees, and we sure would like the chance to meet you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. What do you think? They nailed this one? I think they nailed this one. So starting now, keep in mind that this is just generic footage to show you how the Versa Lounge works in all its different variations. Uh, because we carry so many Wildwoods, and this is available in so many models, and it takes a lot of time to juggle between all these different formats to do my job properly, I thought I'd kind of record something a little more generic, and I think you can definitely get the idea. So first of all, in the Super Slides of Wildwoods, you see that they do have the blackout kind of roller shades. What is really nice is they have slide side breeze windows. I just have those covered up so that window all the way down there on the end will open for airflow, regardless of what configuration you have the seating in. So if you're looking at it right now, this is what I call traditional, where you've got yourself uh, you know, a, a U dinette or a two bench dinette, because there are variants of the Versa Lounge both ways, depending on the floor plan you're looking at. And then a, uh, a sofa over here. And that is a very normal configuration. You don't, you know, see a whole lot of variance there. But if you take note, that rear, uh, well, the the, uh, the seat back closest to us on that U-Dinette, it looks a little different. That's because it's removable. So if you don't want it there, it doesn't have to be there. And that's what's really cool about this thing. This is like phase one of about five of the Versa Lounge arrangements. You can just create this wide open kind of super dining lounger hybrid combo job. Now that's a very technical term, you know. Uh, I understand if you need to back the footage up a little bit to uh, to pick up on I'm putting down right there, but you, you folks are tuned into Halo RV. I think I think you're pretty sharp. What's kind of cool about this is it kind of makes it easy to sort of slide over the table, slide over to the seating. There's there's really no like one way that you have to use this. It's just the way that works best for you and your family. Next, it folds down into one super slide, super seating sleeper setup. I know it's a lot of alliteration for one thing in RV, but you get the idea. Now, what I love about this is this is found, the Versa Lounge setup like this is found in all super slide Wildwood and X-Lights once again. Now, you tend to find a lot of bunkhouse models in those families, but they make quite a few couples campers too. So that means like a super slide rear living couples camper can convert down into being exceptionally guest friendly. And it's long enough that like, I'm a tall person. If I had my head on the right hand side of the frame and then there was a second copy of me sleeping with my head against that far wall, you know, we, we might touch toes, but hey, no big deal. And most of the time you curl up and you're a side sleeper, you could make that work for a night for a weekend. So it's good for more than just kids. It's also like adult guest friendly or frankly, some people have really big kids and they need a little bit more than, uh, you know, just a conventional sleeper uh, bunk setup. They need something longer. But one of the best and most unsung qualities of the Wildwood Versa Lounge is all of this huge tote storage space that you're looking at. This is, I believe it's 20.1 cubic foot of total tote storage. They're food safe containers, so if you want to put some crackers or Oreos or snacks for the kids in there, it's not going to be contaminated if the RV, you know, gets hot while it's in storage. You know, you could leave stuff in here if need be, if they're, especially if they're, you know, like non-perishable kind of things, but even if they're perishable stuff, you know, short-term kind of thing. 
you see that under the sofa there's like a drop down face that uh you know flops down and you can pull those totes out they're stackable uh and and frankly guys if you don't need them don't use them you know there's nothing that says they have to stay here they're not bolted to the camper by any stretch of the imagination and where they're really useful is especially in bunk models because what you can kind of do is dedicate each tote to one of the people in the rv like say the kids and what you can do my daughter uh chloe what i could say is okay chloe i want you to take this tote go upstairs to your room uh there's clothes laying on your bed i want you to put all those clothes in this and then bring it back to me and bang the kids packed it's an easy way to help get the kids involved. It's also an easy way to help keep all the kids' toys and clutter and everything, uh, you know, uh, under control. Now, under the rear dinette bench on you dinette models, because remember, there are some uh, just two bench dinettes, so this part of the video may not necessarily apply. Please keep that in mind. But they leave it wide open. And I like that because you could stuff more totes or duffel bags down there if you're so inclined, but I have long legs. And when I sit at something for a while, I tend to lean forward and I like to curl my legs under me. Now that's just me, but I looked at that and said, oh my gosh, I could actually be comfortable here. Whereas, <laughs> you know, a lot of dinettes just, they aren't comfortable for a bigger person like me. And I think I could really get along just fine on this one over here. But I think most of the time, this is how everyone's going to have this set up. At least most folks, not everybody. I tend to speak in absolutes. It's kind of a flaw that I have because it gives us this extra large stretch out kick back, relax, cuddle up with the family, nap and lounge over here, whatever you want to call it. Somebody called it a fainting lounge on our YouTube channel? Is that, a, is that a thing? Is that like a regional thing? Is that something from down south or out west that just this little Midwestern boy I am, I don't know about the fainting lounge where you can just walk up and faint on this thing? I don't know. You get the idea. Anyway, I, I like the fact that I could just sit in the corner. I could stretch out. And on most models where you find the Versa Lounge, like this is a good example uh, it will actually help you face the entertainment center more organically and give you a more enjoyable experience overall. You know, there's just, there's so many good things. Like, I haven't even talked about the accent lighting over the slide that makes the whole RV look bigger. There's so many good parts about this. And what's cool is when it is in uh, L lounge, fainting, napping, family cuddle mode, whatever you want to call it, you don't lose a dinette. And where I think this is perfect is if you do have kids or guests like this, uh, if you're in a bunkhouse... You still have a little spot where you could sit down, make the kiddos a sandwich or, you know, hot pocket or whatever. You get the idea. Hot pocket. And, uh, <laughs> please don't sue me. You could uh, still have a little spot there. They could play some little board games or something, card games in the corner. But you're still kind of right next to everybody. Everybody's still in the mix. And that's what camping's about for me. It's trying to get everybody together so that everyone has a good time. And I think this is a great way to do that no matter your style of camping no matter how many people are camping this offers something for everybody it's why i call it a swiss army sofa seat